This is the confluence of Tryon Creek with the Willamette River. It's where the end of Tryon Creek is located at its river mile zero. Um, it is low tide in mid-August, so the river level is low and the stream level is low. And so um, a lot of the stream bed is exposed during this low tide period. So the confluence is where, the tri where Tryon Creek flows, meet the Willamette River flows, and it's where a lot of migratory fish gather in the slower moving waters of Tryon Creek and the cooler waters of Tryon Creek during the summer. Um, temperature monitoring in the main stem of Tryon Creek and the main stem of the Willamette River has shown that Tryon Creek inputs into the Willamette during the summer could be as much as four to five degrees Celsius cooler than the Willamette River, which is a benefit to migratory fish that need cold water to survive. The confluence sits about a quarter mile, quarter river mile downstream of the Highway 43 culvert. So the only accessible reach of Lower Tryon to anadromous fish is about a quarter mile of habitat before they are blocked by the Highway 43 culvert. That is a culvert that runs um, 400 feet in length underneath Highway 43 and railroad tracks that connect Lake Oswego to the city of Portland. It is an ODOT maintained roadway and the city of Portland has been planning for almost 20 years now um, a way to get the culvert retrofitted or removed and replaced with a passable structure. Um, we have been prepping the watershed to be able to support anadromous fish once they can pass the culvert and reach the upper, uh, the upper habitats of Tryon watershed. So once we pull that plug of the Highway 43 culvert and allow passage, we expect a lot of activity in the upper reaches as adults find their way up and uh, recolonize habitats that were once used before all of these blockages were built. So we're going on almost 100 years of this culvert being in place and blocking fish passage to the ocean and back. The mouth of Tryon Creek is where fish that are headed out to sea exit the stream and join the larger river network on their way out as they smolt, which is a life stage where juveniles prepare to go out to sea, um, to the estuary. The estuary of the Columbia River is where all fish exit the watershed, the Columbia Basin, and enter when they come home to spawn. So as the young fish uh, go through that smoltification process, they are gradually getting ready to osmoregulate salt water in the brackish zone of the estuary. And osmoregulation is the process of an animal maintaining a salt and water balance that um, allows them to survive in that environment. So as juvenile freshwater fish smoltify in the estuary, they osmoregulate their body to be able to take in salt water and they live that saltwater portion of their lives in the ocean. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen steelhead adults in the um, pond at the mouth of the culvert. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a couple of carcasses, um, pre-spawn mortality carcass that, um, you know, if a, if a fish is exhausted and cannot pass by a barrier um, and is depleted of energy, um, it, it will senesce when adult salmon are coming back into freshwater rivers to spawn, they are not feeding. So they are living off of their fat reserves to keep their um, gametes viable. And they become 
emaciated and weak and their scales start to slough and they just they start breaking down on their journey back to their needle watersheds. So to encounter stressors like high temperatures and poor water quality and lack of protective habitat um, from predators, the cards are kind of stacked against them and um, sometimes they don't make it. So colder water is usually higher in oxygen um, and it, the water of Tryon Creek flowing into the Willamette River in the summer does provide a thermal refuge for fish. So they may um, rest in cooler water, be able to regulate the temperature and, and potentially spend the day in a cold water environment before heading out to the river to try to migrate further upstream in a little bit cooler temperatures. But Tryon Creek is one of only two or three cold water inputs in the entire lower Willamette River that offer that benefit to migratory fish. And that's why it is so incredibly important to remove all of the barriers that these fish face in when they try to come up into the system. The Highway 43 culvert is 400 feet in length, so it is not daylighted. It is a dark tunnel that fish arrive at. Um, most of the time when adults are returning to Tryon Creek, flows are fairly high. We would expect to see fall chinook and coho and winter steelhead making their way upstream. And the velocity, which is water speed, of Tryon flowing through the culvert is too high for those fish to navigate it, um, adults and juveniles alike. There are very small windows once in a while where um, fish of a certain size can take advantage of the water height and speed and make it through the culvert if they are able to navigate 400 feet of an echo chamber. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a scary proposition and um, I, I know, a lot, you know the fish, once they face the culvert and are not able to pass it, they will turn around, fall back and continue upstream or downstream. So around 2008, um, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife installed a series of baffles on the bottom of the culvert to try to simulate a stream bed and break up the flow. A baffle is a um, channel spanning weir of sorts that has a notch in it for water to flow through to create a me meandering path through the culvert. Um, at times like this in August, the flows are really low and it, um, s the, some of the baffles aren't even uh, flowing. So that makes it very difficult for fish to pass. Um, in 2010, uh, the Bureau of Environmental Services with the city of Portland pulled a lot of fill out of the lower quarter mile of Tryon Creek to rehabilitate the stream bed for fish habitat um, benefit. And we were able to build the elevation of the stream bed up uh, to a point where the pool at the at the mouth of the culvert was now high enough to guide the flow from the culvert into the pool without a jump height that was preventing fish from being able to get up into the culvert. So um, now in 2024, um, you know, as you can see behind me, the, the project is, is well worn and um, the wood is stable in place, uh, the riparian area is maturing, and uh, the stream has really evolved quite nicely into, into some pretty good fish habitat. Now our goal is to expand those benefits upstream of the culvert.